Kate Moss has lived in some homes just as stylish as she is over the years. Whether it's her former $9 million abode in the Highgate Hill area of London or her current home in Oxfordshire Cotswold that she's actually owned since 2003, it's hard to decide which is nicer. That's why we're going to check out both of Kate's properties and let you be the judge. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Kate Moss is a British supermodel who rose to prominence as one of the most gorgeous women of all time in an era absolutely packed with them, the 1990s. With three decades spent in front of the camera, you could say Kate has an eye for beautiful things. And I'm not talking just her clothing and fashion. She's helped design the interiors of her own homes as well, especially her go-to space, the master bathroom. Which means when it came time to decorate her two English homes, Kate was very hands-on. Not only did she oversee the decoration of her London mansion, she also supervised the refurbishment of her longtime summer home in the Cotswold, the very place that now became her primary residence. Hey guys, it's Kara back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment looking at where Kate Moss calls home. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. And now, let's get into this video. Before we jump into her London homes, let's take a step back in time. In the 90s, Johnny Depp and Kate Moss were Hollywood's it couple. When these two weren't traveling the world beside one another, they spent a whole lot of time in their stunning 1,800 square foot New York City townhouse. Located on Waverly Place in Manhattan's Greenwich Village and formerly available to rent for around $21,500 a month back in 2018, this home boasts two bedrooms and two full bathrooms, which include both both a steam shower and a luxurious soaking tub set into an alcove. Johnny and Kate's former home was originally built in the 19th century and for a very long time acted as a local theater. Eventually it was converted into a two and a half story home where you can find 17 foot beamed ceilings, a ton of exposed brick walls, a wood burning fireplace, skylights, and a kitchen with a unique coffered copper ceiling. For the bedrooms, one of them is set right over top of the living room in a unique loft style setting while the the other takes up the entirety of the first floor and provides direct access to a private outdoor space. Outside of the ground level, there's also a small garden that Kate used to share with her next door neighbor. After breaking up in 1997, Kate and Johnny would leave the home and one another. And while Johnny headed west to LA, Kate would embark across the ocean back to her home country of the UK. After departing the US, Kate would settle down in the London neighborhood of Highgate Hill, which comes by its name quite naturally, as it's literally one of the highest points in the entire city. Much like her former townhouse, this home was originally built in the 19th century and was at one time the home to Dr. James Gilman, a man who once took a troubled friend and patient by the name of Samuel Taylor Coleridgeon. Kate bought this home with a ton of history in 2011 for roughly $9 million and listing information suggests this four floor residence has seven bedrooms, four bathrooms, two half bathrooms, and seven fireplaces. Down in the basement, the home is said to include a sizable guest suite that was once used by the staff, as well as a generous sitting room, an additional two bedrooms, two bathrooms, a laundry room, a breakfast and dining room, as well as one of the home's two kitchens. Reportedly, there's also a utility room, storage space, a wine cellar, a large vault, and more down there. Up to the main floor, the front section of the home consists mainly of a large entryway, reception hall with a fireplace, and a dining room with hardwood floors and a view of the gated front garden. Meanwhile, a 30 foot long panel drawing room with a series of floor to ceiling French doors runs along the back of the house and leads out to a slim balcony as well as a large patio and an extra large garden. On the second floor, there are two bedrooms which share one bathroom as well as a book line study and a primary suite that consists of a dressing room with a fireplace, a full wall of closets and an ensuite bathroom. Then the top floor boasts four more bedrooms and a good sized kitchen. 
kitchen. Back to the master bath, Moss teamed up with a design firm to create a special silver tinted flower patterned wallpaper. The end result would be a master bath inspired by dusk, or as Kate once described it, picture a summer night when it goes silvery blue from the light of the moon. Centered in the middle of her intimate space is a claw foot tub beneath a vintage crystal chandelier and across a carved stone hearth as well as a mirrored vanity. Kate would call this place home for over 10 years and raise her daughter Lila Grace inside its walls for the majority of her young life. Which is probably why Lila is less than thrilled that late last year her mother decided to move on from here and move permanently into her longtime summer home. After placing this palatial estate on the market, Kate found a buyer in no time at all who offered her a whopping $14.4 million for it. A source added there may be other reasons why Kate moved, saying, Kate has spent the last month or so really doubling down on her sobriety and has spent time out of London as part of that process. Either way, Kate's one-time summer home is basically just as nice. Located in the village known as Oxfordshire Cotswold, this property is actually the home that Kate has owned the longest, having first bought it back in 2003 for around $2.5 million. This 10 bed property has largely been kept out of the spotlight and Kate seems to like it that way. While we don't know a lot about the interiors, much like with her former London mansion, we do know a decent amount about her bathroom which she remodeled with the help of the creative directors at the luxury company known as Drummond's. Out here, Kate's washroom boasts all the modern day additions you'd expect while also managing to pay respect to the history of the home as well. Many period homes can suffer from a lack of light and space, but the high ceilings in here and other original period features have not only been maintained, they've been heightened as well. There's a classic looking painted wardrobe that's been framed with some of Kate's favorite fashion pieces, a choice that helps soften the overall feeling of the room. Nearby, there are also double vanity sinks and plenty of upscale marble surfaces. Last but certainly not least is that antique Victorian single-ended cast iron bath that now boasts a coat of soft dusky pink shading. I mean if her bathroom looks like this, I can only imagine how nice the rest of the home is. No wonder Kate decided to retire here for the time being with her boyfriend. Alright everyone, that is going to bring this Kate Moss house tour to a close. What did you think of her places? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all next time. Bye!